Hey, what's going on guys? It's BrainBean here again. And today we're gonna be taking a look at Bloody Gaming's flagship gaming keyboard, the B975. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at this keyboard. This time I wanna start off my review by first looking at the packaging. Bloody's made a huge improvement to the quality of their box art and overall construction of the package, which I think makes the product feel a little bit more premium. After all, first impressions start at the box, and coming from flimsy cheap boxes their keyboards used to come in, I think it's worth mentioning as a bit of an upgrade. Starting as always with construction and design, the Bloody B975 is a 104 key gaming keyboard with an exposed switch design over an anodized aluminum top plate. This top plate also wraps around the side of the board for an added feeling of durability. Even though all of this is sitting on top of a plastic casing, the keyboard feels solidly built and has very little flex when mashing down on the keys. Aesthetically, this board has a slight industrial look to it with some exposed screws and those shiny metal accents. There's also a bloody logo just above the arrow cluster. The LED indicators consist of orange LEDs under their respective symbols that I think looks nice and clean. The keyboard comes with a detachable plastic wrist rest that's fixed to the keyboard by a pair of screws. Now personally I don't prefer this as it's kind of a pain to have to look for a screwdriver whenever you want to remove it, but on the flip side of that, I've never once removed the wrist rest on my daily driver, so if it were fixed with screws I suppose I never really would have had an issue with it anyways. Bloody also includes a red accent for the wrist rest that you can swap out to change its appearance. As for the wrist rest itself, I do find it to be an improvement over the B945's wrist rest that I reviewed much earlier this year, and while this one is adequate, I wish it came out a little bit more towards the user, and adding some padding or a little bit of rubber would have gone a long way in my book. As for the lighting, the keyboard is controlled via Bloody's Key Dominator software. This software allows you to create macros, change key bindings, and create custom lighting profiles. The keyboard comes with 10 preset lighting profiles, two of which are animations and three are reactive effects. I definitely would have liked to have seen more preset lighting options, but the Dominator software does let you create your own animations with their cool frame by frame editor. It can take a little bit of time to get used to editing this way, but it does give you the freedom to truly make your own animations. It only goes up to 20 frames, so they will be fairly short animations, but either way, it's a pretty neat concept. I also noticed that the smoothness of the animations has seemed to improve since my last review of the software. The lights themselves are nice and vibrant, clearly illuminating the keys. The keycaps are made of ABS plastic, and they do have a slightly textured surface. The font is fairly simple with minor stylization, although any keys that have more than one character on them do look a little bit messy to my eyes, and all of the secondary characters are nicely illuminated. There's not much light bleed in between the keys due to the way the switches are made, so if you like a nice clean look to the lighting then this board should appeal to you. Bloody's keyboards use A4Tex LK Libra optical switches. A4Tech is Bloody's parent company, meaning that these are their own in-house brand of switch. They're currently available in two varieties. They have their brown switches, which is their linear switch, and the orange switches, which are the tactile switch. LK switches are optical, meaning that they use light to register a keystroke instead of the two metal contact points touching to complete a circuit on your classic mechanical switches. This makes them extremely durable and responsive. I also like the design of the LK switch with the baked-in stabilizer that reduces key wobble. The LK switches have an actuation distance of 1.5mm and a total travel of 3mm, which I think is pretty ideal for a gaming keyboard. It's the perfect blend in my eyes of being a fast switch, but also not too fast as to promote mistyping on every keystroke. I'll include a sound test for you guys of both versions of the LK switch. One interesting thing you'll probably notice in the sound test is that the linear switches have a slightly clicky sound to them as the switches make sort of a chattering sound. I kind of like the idea of getting that mechanical sound out of a linear switch that you normally wouldn't have, but ultimately this is going to be up to your preference.
The underside of the B975 has four small rubberized pads and two rubberized extendable legs with some red accenting. I appreciate adding a pop of color to tie into the wrist rest, but having it on the underside of the board where no one can really see it is kind of a waste in my opinion. The cable is nicely braided and it does have a quality feel and it ends in a red USB connector. As for the extras, the B975 comes with the wrist rest and exchangeable accent piece that we talked about earlier. In addition, they also give you a set of eight gray angled keycaps and a keycap puller. They give you a set of Q, W, E, R, A, S, D, and F. Now these keys are angled in a similar style to that of the older Logitech keycaps that we saw in the Orion Spark. As far as keycaps to augment gameplay go, I like the angled design as it helps to differentiate the keys by feel alone, which I think is important in gaming and adds a benefit aside from just cosmetics alone. The board does not have any dedicated macro or media keys, although you do get media controls by way of the function key. There also isn't any USB or audio pass through. The B975 comes in at 150 bucks. Although I have some gripes with this keyboard, the wrist rest could be a little bit better and I would have liked to have seen them have a little bit cleaner font on the keycaps, but all of that aside, the switches alone provide a user experience that I believe is worth the price just in itself. The improvements I saw in the software show that Bloody is continuing to improve and I'm really excited to see what they do with their next generation of peripherals if this is the direction that they're going. Overall, for 150 bucks, the B975 is an exceptional optical gaming keyboard that is definitely worth taking a look at. Well, that's it for the video, guys. As always, let me know in those comments down below what you think about the B975. And of course, give this video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support. If you're new here, I'd love to see you subscribe because I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.